So you're trying to determine the best cities to be a software developer? Well, you reached the right video. Let me explain. This video is brought to you by DigiLink Academy, your number one source to learn programming fast and get to that six figure salary you desire. Our Academy have a wide range of courses, including our 30 day developer lunch pad, our program interview course, and our mentorship program, and much, much more. When you sign up for our free guide, you get access to our community of like minded professionals who's going to help take your career to the next level. So let's take the next step and sign up for our seven step guide and click the link below to get started. I'll see you guys in the guide. A lot of you guys are looking to be software developers and you living all around the United States or third world country or even overseas. I'm based here in Mississippi, so I want to make sure I put things in perspective of where you are. And then mainly in this video, we're going to talk about the United States, but we can, you can, you can basically apply this for any country. So that being said, guys, when I first thought about being a software developer, I stayed in a small town called Macon, Mississippi, and it's about 2000 people and they have no technology in that particular town, but I actually uh, went to college and I lived in a, a town that had, I think, uh, 18,000 people, which is a ton of people compared to 2,000, but still not on the radar when it comes to being a uh, software development friendly city. So once I actually graduated, I decided, hey, uh, I can live here locally, I can still work here, and um, I can find me a software development job. I, that whole city, I think there was two software development jobs and one was not even active. <laughs> so it's really one. And I applied for it, obviously that I didn't get it, and I determined pretty quickly in my career that, hey, if I want to be a software developer, I'm going to have to move to a larger city. And unfortunately, I end up moving to our state capital, which, you know, Jackson is a population of about 150, 175,000 people, which not even a large city um, as far as just United States perspective, but it was better than nothing. That being said, guys, in order for you to position yourself for a better development job, you have to pick a great city. Um, key thing. I always use the 200 rule. And the 200 rule would mean if you're in the top 200 city in the United States or a city with a population of at least 150, 250,000 people, then you're in a ballpark. I prefer that 250,000 mark. And thinking about it now, I think Jackson is uh, 250 or two, uh, 200 or somewhere around there. But you want to be in those size city. Not that you can't find a development job in um, a smaller city. It's just that, guys, you already know when you, you have recessions, companies have restructures, things change, you lose your job. You don't want to have to up and move out of a city because you can't find a job. That's my point. You know, a lot of us want to get houses. We want to really uh, plant roots in the city and we don't have desire to move around as much. So you want to pick a city so that even if you lose your job or something happened or you want to switch jobs, you don't have to actually go off to another city. So that's one of the primary reasons. And another reason is the larger the city, the better the pay. Uh, you have to understand, guys, that the larger city is going to have the best companies, the Fortune 500 that you can work for. The technology driven, friendly companies are going to be in these larger cities. You don't see a Fortune 500 company in Macon, Mississippi. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> not to say uh, there's no, like Walmart, they're in what, Benton or Benson, um, Arkansas, and that was basically nothing before they uh, decided to make that their headquarters. But that's rare, guys, and I don't want you to be banking on that. Um, just say for an example, that if that, whoever lived in that city as a software development now, if Walmart leave that city, what's the likelihood that they're going to be able to find another software development job after Walmart decide they want to go to a larger city? Very slim. You do not want to be in that position, guys. You want to make sure that you're in a solid situation so that you don't have to up and move based off a, uh, a company. And it can be something as little as, you know, you don't like your manager, you want to move up and just want to be a developer or a manager. If you're in a smaller city, you're probably going to be a smaller company. You're not going to have those options when it comes to that guy. So that being said, guys, you have to do that. 
I talk about this more in my seven step guide. If you haven't already, go sign up for that seven step guide. Links are below and it's free guys. Go ahead and sign up for that. And if you already signed up for it and um, support the channel, I have links below to some premium courses. I have my 30 day lunch pad course to really get you guys ready to be a common developer. And we kind of, we go over some details as far as your city, age, location, just to really make sure you have a support system, the foundation, and just the environment that's gonna help you thrive. And cities are one of those, or make sure you pick the right one. And my software development guide can help you with that. Um, that being said, another one, guys, um, you have a variety at larger cities. So you got your LAs, you have your, well, I would say the top place in the United States, obviously, is Silicon Valley because that's known for software development. They pay the most, but um, it's not the only one. Um, New York City is good. Um, Washington, D.C., Austin, um, even cities like Atlanta, Georgia. Um, you got um, sleepers like, um, it's, a, it's a city, oh man. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, you go out west, you got uh, over in Utah, you got Salt Lake City. Um, you got a lot of them. Comment below on the cities you, you think are good and we'll kind of say yeah or nay. But any of them that have larger populations in that top 200, 250 uh, or so, or at least 150,000 people, is going to be a safe bet. Um, obviously, the larger city, the higher. Um, obviously, New York, Boston, any of those. Um, one thing that's going to really dictate a uh, city as well, guys, is what industry you want to work into. Um, you got places like Charlotte, who is a um, healthcare hub. Um, you got uh, Houston, which is an oil and gas and fuel hub. Um, you got New York, which is financial. And you got those types of cities that are geared to certain industries. So whatever industry you decide to work for, if you really want to move up in that specific industry and be working for one of the top companies, that's going to be a driver of which city you go in. So kind of keep that in mind. Do your research. Know what companies are headquartered where and go from there. I want to hit on another point too, guys. A lot of you guys think, hey, Rod, I can work remotely and all the stuff you're talking about is moot. Yes, for a senior lead rock star developer is true, but a lot of you guys, our expectations are out of whack. You think just because we got this uh, disaster going on and everybody's gonna continue to work from home and companies just gonna exclusively work from home? Yeah, that's gonna be the case in the short term, but just like any other thing, they're gonna find out pretty quickly that a lot of average people are not able to work at home efficiently, even with technology. They're gonna find a way around it. And from a communication perception, uh, being in an office um, workplace is gonna be best for everybody to work in an office. So if you're a junior developer with no experience trying to find a job and you decide, hey, I wanna work remotely, yeah, you can get a job, maybe at a startup or some kind of company that they can't find developers so they have to settle for you. Yeah, you might have find positions like that, but it's not going to be something that um, you're going to make a ton of money or it's just going to be something that is a long-term uh, long viable option. So kind of keep that in mind. But if you want to work for the Fortune 500s and probably have some work at home opportunities, I guarantee you, you're going to probably have to have experience or not be the low man on the totem pole to get those remote work from home jobs. Those are going to go to the senior lead developers, people who've been there, and they're going to have incentives so that you can make sure that uh, you qualify for those jobs guys so just kind of keep that in mind try to keep uh, my eye on the time I don't want to make this video too long but I want to hear from you guys uh, what current city you live in and how is your job markets comment below and if you work for if you're in a smaller city Comment below too what's your experience. Um, do you think I'm you think I'm right or you think I, you disagree with me? Comment below, and um, let's start a conversation so that we can make sure we give people perspectives from the small city developers off as well. But I find um, early on in your career is probably best to, to go to the larger cities just to give yourself a lot better chance to become a developer because the small cities don't already are limited on the jobs and if you are a, a junk, uh, developer with no experience you got high competition in those segments 
So it's probably gonna be best for you to be uh, in a larger city. So guys, like, subscribe to my content. If you have additional questions, comment below. And uh, if you haven't already, go check out my premium courses below and support the channel. Like, subscribe to the content. And um, I'll put a link to my uh, seven step guide here. So go ahead and check that out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.